First thing that you need to do is to load your images into your mountains document. To do so, you can either drag and drop them directly in the middle of this document, or you can use the open a studyable button here at the top left hand corner of the software. And you also have on the left a file explorer uh, on which you can browse directly into your folders and you also have a preview of your images. So we usually recommend to use this file explorer uh, in order to grab your images. I'm going to select these two ones, drag and drop them here. And note that they are loaded. I can have access to the stereoscopic reconstruction operator. Go to operators and click on stereoscopic reconstruction. The following dialog box will appear and we are going to adjust the settings together. First thing that you have to make sure is that the first image on the left is the not tilted one and the second one is the tilted one. So in my case they are already replaced since the zero one is on the left hand and the five one is on the right hand. If you don't remember the direction of your tilt, you can click on the cinema view here and che visually check where, what was the dire direction of the tilt. So in this case, we can clearly see that it's a north-south one. So I'm going to tick this box here. And now we are going to adjust the scale of the images. So you can either do it by pixel size, if you know the pixel size of your images. And, but most of the time you will have the cartridge on your SCM images and you can define the scale thanks to it. Click on this button and define the scale with your mouse. So you can zoom in by using the mouse wheel here. And to adjust the area taken into account for the reconstruction. Zoom out the same way you zoomed in. And then you can use here this bar in order to also assess the scale of your image. If you're struggling with the zoom, just like I'm doing right now, you can use the mouse wheel by clicking on it to displace the camera. The arrow keys of your keyboard are also working. Zoom out and put the right scale, of course, in my case it's 10 microns, and you can validate this. And we are going to put also the tilt angle which was used when acquiring these images, and as we said earlier, it was 5 degrees. Okay, now that uh, our images are set up nicely, we are going to adjust the search searching window. The searching window is going to look for matching points between the two images. Using the suggest size for windows is going to be your best friend most of the time, since the software is going to automatically suggest a searching window um, by detecting the disparity uh, between two images. So if I click on this with my two images, I notice that the searching window suggested is almost along one axis only, and we, there are very few pixels of research along the other axis. This likely means that my image is not shifted. If you click on Suggest Size for Windows and you remark that the searching window is showing high values on both axes, it likely means that during the acquisition, the tilt was not purely on one axis, but in an oblique direction. In my case, I can see that there are only a high value on the north-south um, direction, so it likely means that I've been making a great acquisition. Now we are going to choose the quality of our reconstruction. Most of the time people opt for a high resolution reconstruction, but it also means a higher calculation time. So we recommend usually to Tick quick draft at first and go to high resolution afterwards once that you are sure about the settings of your dialog box. In my case, I'm also going to tick this box here, ignore flattest areas, since I'm dealing with flat areas on my images. Even though we said earlier that we should avoid this kind of images, sometimes we ha you have to put up with it. So tick this box and adjust the threshold here. You will notice that a yellow zone is going to rise on the left hand image here which shows the flattest areas that are going to be ignored in the calculation. As a result, the interpolation will be 
made on the texturized part here and it will be more meaningful. Now we are going to choose our post-processing options. First, you have to know that this 3D reconstruction may generate some outliers um, by making this reconstruction. Outliers may be undesired spikes on your surface, for instance. If you tick this box, the software is going to automatically detect them and remove them. You can also choose to uh, see the uh, uncalculated areas by the software. Since it's looking for matching points, sometimes the software is not going to find matching points between the two images. We are going to see the results and tick this box. Here, the software shows all the points that it has been able to find between both images. And if we don't tick this box, we can see the interpolation that is being made between both images. Here we can see that it's pretty nice and we had a lot of found points in our image, so uh, I guess that the input interpolation could be quite fine. Okay, I'm quite happy with the settings of my dialog box now, and I think that I can try to tick the high resolution reconstruction in order to get a more texturized um, result. I can notice that when I'm clicking on this, uh, the calculation time has been multiplied by four. In our case, it's not a problem since it's a matter of seconds, but if you're dealing with high resolution images, you can imagine the time you will be saving by ticking first quick draft and then opting for a high resolution reconstruction at the end. Now we can see that with the high resolution reconstruction, we have much more texture. So I'm quite happy with the results that I have right now. So I'm going to validate this. Now a new kind of studyable has been generated in my mountains document. It's called a surface plus image kind of studyable. And you will also notice that in the workflow on the right, every action that we have been make, making since the beginning is recorded. If I want to go back in the stereoscopic reconstruction operator, I just have to click there and every settings that I've been making before can be changed and everything is going to be um, refreshed uh, if I change any setting. If you want further information on the workflow, you can check out our YouTube channel. Okay, now we are going to display this newly acquired topography into 3D. To do so, I'm going to click on it go to studies and click on 3D view. I already have a nice 3D, I'm going to put it into full screen, but I want to adjust a bit the rendering according to my tastes. So maybe the first thing that I want to do is to adjust the palette according to my needs. In my case, I'm going to pick the magma one because I like it pretty much. I will also remove the base since uh, here I want to observe the drill hole that has been made and I can look below the, the base so I really would like to see how it looks without the base. I'm going to adjust a bit the transparency in order to see more details and I really want to focus on the texture of the drill hole so uh, adjusting a bit the transparency can give better results. and. You can also adjust the rendering. In our case, uh, the continu continuous rendering is already picked, so I'm going to keep it like this. We usually recommend to use this rendering when dealing with stereoscopic reconstruction. Last but not least, you can also adjust the amplification of your 3D and exaggerate the Z heights. To do so, just press Shift and use the mouse uh, left mouse click of your mouse and you can adjust it like this. You can also normalize X, Y, and Z to see how your hole should look like in real life. I was pretty close to the reality just before. 